Good afternoon, everybody. You are very welcome to join us today. Uh, my name is Raymond Miller, and I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, which we have entitled Considering Queens, It's Not Too Late to Apply. If you are still thinking about applying to Queens, or um, you're thinking about possibly changing your UCAS choices, you've come to the right place. The purpose of today is to tell you everything you need to know about the university. And it's also to um, tell you about the support that's available to you. So through our support services like Queen's Sport or the Students' Union or accommodation, but also to give you key information, like I say, about actually changing your UCAS applications, uh, your UCAS application choices and the process you'll need if you haven't yet applied, but you want to. So in a moment, we are going to uh, deliver a presentation. It will last around 30 to 35 minutes. And after that, you'll be able to ask questions um, about anything that we have spoken about. These questions will be private, so other attendees won't actually see uh, what is being asked. So feel free to ask whatever you want to. I'm joined today by a couple of colleagues, as you can see. So firstly, I'll introduce uh, my colleague from admissions, Sandra Bloomer. Hello, everybody. You. Um, my name is Sandra Bloomer, as Raymond said, and I'm the admissions manager for undergraduate admissions at Queen's. Thank you, Sandra. And my other colleague is Matt Wetherill, and I will hand over to Matt to introduce himself and to just begin our presentation. Thanks, Raymond. Hi, everybody. Thank you again for uh, deciding to uh, watch this presentation today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Belfast itself. Uh, to give you a bit of information around the city, the university, so hopefully you'll find it useful. Uh, but like Raymond said, if you do have any questions, feel free to post them and we'll ask them as we go as, uh, towards the end of the presentation. Uh, so Belfast, it's there, as you can see, uh, is a vibrant, it's a cultural uh, place to come and live, it's a cultural place to study, uh, it's a political capital of Northern Ireland. But actually, it's more than just that political capital, it's uh, also got a lot of uh, artistic uh, culture around it. Belfast has a university at its core of the city, so a lot of other students will be around you and you'll get that student atmosphere. But it is really important to say as well, it's a safe and friendly city. Uh, and really importantly, I'll come on to this a little bit later as well, it's got the lowest cost of student living in the UK. So that's really important to you as students because it means that you have a little bit more money in your pocket uh, to spend on what you decide to, uh, to spend your money on rather than it going on rent and things like it might in other bigger cities. But outside of Belfast itself, there's lots of other things that you can do within Northern Ireland. So that's a picture there of uh, the Giants Causeway, uh, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So that's just one of the examples that you can either use uh, transport to get there or you can uh, use a car with your friends to get there. It's not like, very far at all. But that's just one of the examples of things in Northern Ireland as a whole that you can do and you can experience. Uh, so for myself, one of the other things that I did as well is I went and did a Game of Thrones tour. I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. So I did one of those. And that's just another example. There's lots of other things outside of Belfast and in Northern Ireland that might interest you, that might make your experience at University at Queen's a richer experience as well. Uh, in terms of uh, getting here, there's lots of uh, transport links to Northern Ireland and to Belfast. There's two airports in Belfast itself, uh, and you can fly to those airports from most major UK airports as well. Uh, it's about an hour away to fly uh, from major UK cities, and there is also that ferry crossing as well. Uh, I will talk to you a little bit about this uh, further on, but we also do have a GB scholarship. So for GB students, uh, so those students applying from England, Wales, Scotland, uh, the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands, there is also a scholarship that can help you towards the cost of this transport as well. So it's definitely easy to get to Belfast and it's something you could look into as well. Uh, but in terms of Belfast itself, uh, so the city, it's the capital city and it's also the cultural centre of Northern Ireland. And it's a small and compact city, so it's really walkable. So you're not going to have to spend money on transport like buses or trains to get around. Uh, so in the picture there, for example, that's the city hall behind them. Uh, and that's maybe a 20 minute walk to Queen's if you're a really slow walker. Uh, so like I say, it's a really compact and friendly city. Uh, and there's lots of different attractions to keep you uh, entertained and interested in Belfast while you're here studying. Uh, so, for example, that's the city hall, as I said. And then the Ulster Museum is just around the corner from... Uh, the university itself literally just around the corner uh, and then there's things like the crumlin road jail so you can go and look at all these different cultural elements of belfast while you're here studying with us as well uh, i won't go go on too much about the nightlife but it's really important to point out that 
nightlife in Belfast is really wide and varied. So whatever it is that you're interested in, uh, whether it's those traditional pubs or live music venues where you can see traditional Irish music, or whether it's more high-end cocktail bars or sports bars, there really is a night uh, a nightlife that will interest yourself. So what I'd recommend doing is coming over, having a look at the, at the university, but also maybe experiencing the nightlife, uh, which is an important part of some people's experience at university. Uh, there's lots of things uh, to do in Belfast around things like shopping. So we've got all the major high street brands that you might find at Victoria Square Shopping Centre and Castle Court. But then also my favourite personally, St George's Market. Uh, there's lots of smaller boutique shops, smaller boutique cafes and food outlets where you can go to St George's Market and have a look around there. So I'd really recommend if you do come to Belfast, have a look around, go to St George's Market and experience that. Uh, so before we go on to the uh, next slide, I've just got a quick video that we're going to show you uh, just to hopefully highlight some of the uh, positives around Belfast as well. So hopefully that video gave you a bit of an idea about uh, Belfast itself and some of the fantastic things that you can do while you're studying with us. Uh, but in terms of why choose Queen's as a university, there's lots of fantastic reasons to do so. Uh, so a few of them are on the presentation there, as you can see, uh, ranked 173rd in the world. And that's really important to you as a student because it means that when you get your degree from Queen's and you go out into industry, that degree that you've got will be recognised as a really quality uh, degree. Uh, and whether that's what, if you study with us, uh, uh, if you go on to work within uh, Great Britain or if you go and work internationally as well, it's ranked 173rd in the world. So it does have that prestige as well. We're the ninth oldest UK in the uni university in the UK, sorry. And we're ranked 16th in the world for international outlook. And again, the benefit to you as a student is that actually when you come and study here at Queen's, you'll get a really rich experience. You'll be meeting people from different cultures, different backgrounds. Uh, and you'll be able to interact with people that might not be directly inside your circle at the minute. Uh, and we're also a member of the Russell Group University. So for those of you who don't know, the Russell Group Universities are the leading universities in the UK, uh, and they are research intensive. So what that means, uh, the benefits to you as a student, is that you're going to be taught by academics that are really on the cutting edge of their field. So no matter what you're studying, the academics that are teaching you will be really teaching you the most up-to-date information so that when you go into industry, you're prepared for that in the best way possible. 
Uh, the university itself is split into uh, three different faculties. So they're just on there, arts, humanities, social sciences, engineering and physical sciences, and also medicine, health and life sciences as well. And within those faculties, they're split into different schools. So it might be that you're interested in studying uh, English, for example, but you're not quite sure which English you'll be studying. But the School of Arts, English and Languages within the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences will have a few different courses on there. And as you can see, some of them are really highly ranked. Uh, so, for example, uh, accounting ranked number eight in the UK. So it's really uh, a good opportunity for you to look through these different schools and faculties and think about what you might be applying for uh, and look at the modules that build up those subjects. So, for example, at the Faculty of Engineering and Physical Sciences, we've got chemical engineering that was ranked 15th in the UK. We've got uh, electronic, electrical and electronic engineering that was ranked ninth and also things like planning, environment and development that was ranked sixth in the UK as well. And then the final faculty, Faculty of Medicine, Health and Life Sciences. You can obviously see there the really popular uh, dentistry and medicine courses, but also we've got uh, lots of other courses around like the School of Biological Sciences, for example. So I'd really, uh, I'd really advise you to look into the modules behind the courses that you're applying to uh, and get a really clear understanding of what kind of things you'll be studying when you come to Queen's. We recognise at Queen's that uh, money and financial worries can be something that concerns students going into university. And it is really important that you think about that when you're applying. Uh, Northern Ireland itself has the lowest student cost of living in the UK. Uh, and it says that over £5,000 per year cheaper for students to live in Northern Ireland compared to London. And that's not just the same, that's not just with London, but the same with other bigger cities as well. So it's really worth your time thinking, actually, if it's £5,000 per year cheaper to live in Northern Ireland, then where would I have to find that extra money from? Would I have to work more if I went to a university in London, for example? So you can make those in, uh, informed decisions. Uh, and with that in mind, we've put a few different things in place that can help you uh, when you come to university financially. So, for example, the GB Undergraduate Scholarship. If you're a student from England, Wales, Scotland, the Isle of Man or the Channel Islands, you can apply for the GB Undergraduate Scholarship to uh, either for reduction in your fees or for uh, things like lifestyle benefits, so for gym memberships, etc. So I'd really recommend you doing, if you are one of those students, look into the GB Undergraduate Scholarship. But we've also got the Entrance Scholarship Competition. So if you are a student that gets three years at your A-levels, you can apply for the Entrance Scholarship Competition uh, and you can get uh, rewards of up to from between £600 to uh, £2,400 and that's money that goes directly to yourselves so if you want to go out and spend it all that's fantastic that's brilliant it's up to you it's a reward for you to uh, do with what you what you'd like to do and then we've also got the sports scholarships so for example the elite athlete program if you have uh, represented internationally either junior or senior level or if you have been to an olympics or a world championships or european championships and there's all kinds of support from financial to strength and conditioning training to coaching, physio. There's lots of different support available for you there as well. And then also the academy scholarships. So for the five main sports at Queen's, which are rugby, hockey, GAA, uh, rowing and soccer, uh, there's lots of different help there with, with those different uh, sports. And we've also got sports bursaries as well, if you've got a proven record of success in any of those sports. Uh, like I said, if you have got any questions, feel free to ask them towards the end of the presentation. But what I'll do now is I'll pass over to my colleague, uh, Raymond. Thanks very much, Matt. Um, so as Matt was talking about there, he was talking about the, the study side of things. But university life is also about relaxing and socialising. And in order to allow, <coughs> excuse me, to allow you to study, relax and socialise, we have invested heavily into our facilities across the campus. We've invested over £350 million in the last 10 years, and we're going to match that in the next 10 years. An example would be that uh, we have a we do have a mix of historic and tech savvy facilities. So the historic facilities are things like the Lanyon building, which you can see in the background of that photograph. But we also have tech savvy facilities, things like our interactive lecture theatres, or Shonic Arts Research Centre. Uh, so anybody that's working with sound in any way would use the Sonic Arts Research Centre. We have film studios, flight simulators, state-of-the-art computer suites. But there are also a number of areas where you can go to socialize and do some private study and hang out with friends. So those would be various um, cafes that we have on campus. So we have a Hope Cafe or Junction Cafe. We also have a, a state-of-the-art library, which I'll speak to you about a wee bit later. 
we have a well-being room and we also have our students union and we have a new students union which is currently being built so you would uh, be able to avail of that as well this video just gives you an overview of our campus and shows you some drone footage around the whole campus to show you the types of buildings and facilities that we have on offer So that just gives you an overview of all the different facilities and buildings that we have. Accommodation is a really important part of coming to Queen's. We have three main accommodation locations. So we have Elms BT1, Elms BT2, which are both based in the city centre. And we also have Elms BT9, or sometimes called Elms Village. First year students coming to Queen's have a guaranteed place in our university accommodation. And in terms of prices, we have over 3,400 rooms, which are priced between £75 and £149 per week. Now, for some of you, that may seem uh, quite expensive, but you have to factor in everything that that includes. So it includes all your utility bills, so your electricity, heating, hot water would all be covered. But it also includes contents insurance, uh, your high-speed Wi-Fi. You get a cleaning service in the communal areas within the accommodation locations. There's contents insurance, um, there's also a TV license in the communal areas. You have 24 hour security as well included within your rent. So that's something that's really important that we make sure that you're safe and secure at all times. And there's a postal service included in that as well. So if you have any packages arriving, they will be sorted for you at reception and you can just go pick them up. You don't need to pay any um, late fees or anything or go to the post office, it's all there for you. And when you consider as Matt had previously mentioned, that Northern Ireland has the lowest student cost of living in the UK, it makes for a pretty good deal. Not only is everything included within your accommodation, um, but you're also living cheaply in Belfast. The only thing you have to do is feed yourself. We will cover the rest. Um, and another great thing about the accommodation at Queen's is that there are residential life officers on hand. So these are people who are employed by the university or current students who are there to help you settle into what life is like in accommodation. They're there to help you make friends, to help you experience new things and to go on different trips and that sort of thing. This just gives you an example of the sorts of things that were going on in Elms BT1 a few weeks ago. So there was karaoke going on on a Monday night. Uh, there was a gym class on a Wednesday. On Thursday, there was a quiz. And then at the weekends, they run certain trips. So on this particular week, there was a trip to Sleep Donard, which is a, a lovely mountain range in Northern Ireland and a trip to Belfast Zoo on Sunday. And I know at the start of the year, they often run trips to Ikea, so you can get your room all kitted out for the start of the academic year. So living in accommodation is a really um, integral part of coming and studying at Queen's. The Maclay Library is somewhere where you will spend a lot of time. It's the main library at Queen's, and it's used by over 10,000 students every day. Within the library, there are a large number of special collections. So these include uh, books, maps, photographs and manuscripts that date back to the 12th century onwards. These are things that you have access to as part of your uh, academic degree or if you just have an interest in anything like that you can go along and get those out and have a look at them. We also have a dedicated language centre within the Maclay Library and this uh, allows you to learn over 20 different languages and one of the languages within that is actually sign language so if, you, if that was something you wanted to do you could do it through 
um, the language center within the library. Uh, there is a C.S. Lewis reading room within the Maclay Library, uh, and this is my personal favorite part of the library. It's an area where you can be quiet and do some reading, but it is based on the work of C.S. Lewis. So C.S. Lewis was a famous Northern Irish author who wrote the Screwtape Letters, Prince Caspian, and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And the door to the, this room is actually based on the wardrobe door from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So if nothing else, it's, it's pretty cool to go see it. Sport at Queen's is really important to us. We recognize the benefit that sport can play in both your physical and mental well-being, and we're really proud of our facilities at Queen's. Whether you're an elite athlete or you just want to get involved in sport for the very first time, there will be something that you can do at Queen's. Our main indoor facility would be our Physical Education Centre, or PEC, and in there you have a state-of-the-art gym and weights area, as well as over 100 weekly exercise classes. There's a 25-metre swimming pool, and a diving pool and a sauna that you can get involved with, as well as different climbing walls, squash and badminton courts, and 3G pitches if you wanted to play a uh, sport outside. So there's lots that you can do within the PEC. There's also within Elms uh, BT1, there is a state-of-the-art gym, and in there, there are 20 weekly exercise classes. So as, as well as having the main gym, you also have a gym within Elms BT1 that you can avail of if you live there. There's a number of outdoor facilities as well. So at Upper Malone Playing Fields, which you may have seen in the video there, we have lots of grass pitches. So that would be used for GAA, rugby, soccer, and hockey. There's a brand new hockey pitch has just been laid there. It's got blue turf and it's really vibrant and a great um, pitch to play on. And we also have Queen's Boathouse, which is a area right at the riverside of the River Lagan, where you can go and all your uh, boating equipment is stored there. Um, so if, if that's what you're into, you can do that at Queen's as well. One of the main parts about coming to university, yes, it's about studying, don't get me wrong. You wanna get the best possible degree that you can, but it's also about meeting new people, doing new things and uh, going new places. And you can do all that through Queen's Students' Union. Their motto is that they are your rock, making your life at Queen's enriching, rewarding and fun. And that's what it's all about, having fun. They are currently ranked seventh in the UK for uh, student experience. So if you do join the union, you're getting a really fun, good experience. There are a number of different ways in which you can get involved. So firstly would be through student voice. If you um, want to stand up for something that you really believe in, you can do that by getting elected as a student officer, student counselor, or a school or course rep. And that means you have a say in the things that are going on around the university. Because the, the union is, uh, for the students, run by the students. You can also get involved in any volunteering opportunities through SU. So whether that is uh, homework clubs or uh, doing up lo uh, local areas within the city, you can do that and make the community a better place. There's also Enterprise SU. So if you want to develop your any business skills that you have, you can do that through the Enterprise Unit. They run certain events throughout the year, like uh, Dragon's Den or Apprentice style events. And it means if you have a wee bit of business acumen, but it's not necessarily related to the course that you're studying, you can go along to Enterprise SU and they will help you hone those skills. Advice SU is another service you can avail of. If you have need advice about anything, they can help you directly or signpost you to the relevant area. It could be about money or funding, accommodation or health and well-being, and they'd be happy to help you with any of that. But one of the main things that people think of when they think of Queen's Students Union are our clubs and societies. Currently, we have over 215 clubs and societies with 11,000 student members. And they range from things like cheerleading. Um, I know our cheerleaders last year went to Florida as part of the World Cheerleading Championships. We have a Dragon Slayers Club, which is a gaming club within Queen's. There's a juggling club, origami society, a photography society, Quidditch club, our robotics society. We even have an underwater hockey team. It really covers a broad range of activities that you can get involved with. And if there's something there that possibly uh, you would, that sorry, if there's something that isn't there that you would love to start and get involved with, you can start your own club. The Students' Union have ways and means uh, in which to help you do that and they will support you through the process. And it means that as well as having a bit of fun with your fun with your friends and doing an activity you enjoy, you would also be acting as the chairperson or the treasurer or the social secretary for that club. 
and it means that you're showing a wee bit of um, extracurricular work. It's an extra string to your bow when it comes to your CV and looking for job opportunities. Another thing we would always really encourage you to do if you can is to internationalize your Queen's experience. By doing some international travel while studying at Queen's, it can have a really uh, positive impact on your, your studies, but also your wider life. It can broaden your horizons, allow you to see what's going on in different countries and how different cultures um, interact with each other. And it can enrich your university experience when you bring that back to your degree back in Belfast. And similarly with the Students Union, it allows you to gain that edge in the job market. So you gain that competitive edge um, by doing something a little bit different to other people who may be applying for the same job as you after you graduate. Over 700 uh, Queen students do some international travel each year and they'll either take a semester or a, um, a full year or a few weeks, whatever it happens to be, to get involved with various different programmes that we have. So this just gives you an idea of the range of programmes. We have stuff going on in North America, across Europe, Asia and other opportunities globally. Just to flag up a couple of them, we have a programme called Study China, where you would go to a city in China and a university in China for three to four weeks and you would immerse yourself in Chinese life, the culture, the language. You can also get involved with the Erasmus program, which means that you can either study, work, or teach for part of your degree in a European country. And that can vary from a few weeks to a full semester. And also study USA. So if business is your thing and you would love to study business, but you're not necessarily doing it in, at Queens in Belfast, you can uh, go to America and study business for a full year at a campus in America. So there's lots of opportunities to get involved. And what that does, it really um, enhances your CV. It shows a wee bit of independence. It shows that you're not afraid to step outside your comfort zone. So those are, again, are all things that employers are looking for. Another way in which you can achieve that competitive edge is through Degree Plus. What Degree Plus is, is uh, it, it basically uh, allows you to gain accreditation for any work-related activities that you do outside of your studies. So that might be things like becoming a campus tour guide, where you would show prospective students and their families around the university, or you could become a student ambassador. So um, you would go back into your old school, or you would do uh, and tell people about your experience of Queens, or you could go to certain events that are being run, and people might have questions to you um, about what it's like to study at Queens. You could join various homework clubs that are going on around the city. You can uh, be part of a leadership skills program, a business skills program. There are so many things that you can do in order to show that you have done some work related activities and actually gain accreditation for that. Our Degree Plus program is recognised and supported by employers and over 2,200 Queen's students do this each year. A degree from Queen's um, is really, really important because we have a, a high level and an ongoing level of success rate for our graduates. 96% of Queen's undergraduates are in employment or further study six months after they graduate. And as well as that, as well as, as, well as being able to, to get work, they're also excelling in the work that they do because Queen's graduates are in senior leadership positions in 80 out of Northern Ireland's top 100 companies. While all that's going on, all the academic work, all the extracurricular stuff, maybe some travel, being part of a club or society, we want you to know that we are there with you every step of the way to fully support you in what you're doing. Whether it be academic support that you need, so um, when you first enroll with the university, you are assigned an advisor of studies, and that is your academic point of contact, the person you go to if you need help and support with your academia. There's also a careers, employability and skills service, so um, you can do different uh, programs through the Careers, Employability and Skills Service, things like uh, insight into management. So if you want to learn how to be a better manager and work as a team, uh, you can do that. There are a number of in internships and volunteering programs you can get involved with. There are development weeks where you can try out uh, different things that are totally new to you within um, those three weeks that are set aside throughout the year. There's also um, Advice SU, which I spoke about. So if you need advice about anything, you can go to them. And if you do have any issues uh, with your wellbeing, our counselling and advice services can help you. So there's a drop-in centre or uh, counselling, consultations, and coaching sessions, all that you can get involved with. 
And then finally, if you have a disability at any level, whether it be a physical disability or a specific learning difficulty, Queen's can help you with that and provide any adjustments that you may need, whether that be around exams or with equipment, we are there to help you. If you need any more information about what Matt and I have spoken about, you can go on, onto our website, contact us via email, or you can check out uh, all our social media channels. Particularly our YouTube channel is really good. There's a lot of really good content on there and it'll show you what Belfast is like, what Stunning at Queens is like. And just before I hand over to Sandra, I'm just gonna show you one more video, which gives you an idea of what a day in the life of a Queen student would be like. So at this point, I'd just like, I'd just like to over to Sandra. And if you do have any questions about anything that Matt and I have spoken about, we will be happy to answer those after Sandra has chatted to you about changing your UCAS application choices. Hello everyone again. Um, I obviously, Matt and Raymond have been talking about um, studying at Queen's um, and everything obviously that goes with university life. Uh, so what I want to do now is, is spend the next few minutes talking to you about if you're considering changing um, your UCAS application choices. Now, obviously some of you will have already applied to Queen's um, and you may be holding offers at the moment, but you may be looking at amending um, choices um, at this point. So what we, our advice would be is that if you do want to amend these choices, there are two things. Some of you may already um, have chosen your firm and insurance choices. Some of you may still have, and obviously you will know um, that you have until the 18th of June um, to do so. Firstly, if you actually have chosen your firm and insurance choices and you're still within the 14 day, I suppose what we would call cooling off period, um, you can actually change within that um, within that period of time, so it's 14 days, um, quite easily by contacting um, the UCAS customer experience team um, at UCAS and they will obviously help you to do that. However, if you are sitting with either firm or insurance choices um, and you're outside the 14 day period, 
um, you've got to at that stage. So if you decide at, at some point um, over the next few weeks, um, et cetera, that you would like to change your firm and possibly your insurance choice, um, you will need to contact UCAS. They will ask you to provide full details. So they will be looking for you to indicate um, sometimes it is a straight swap that applicants want to do. They want to maybe swap their CF and CI, or indeed they might want to change to a choice that they have already declined and maybe choose that as their firm. Um, so UCAS will want you to obviously provide the detail um, of what it is you want to do, and you will need to be clear um, of what courses that you actually now would like to hold as your firm and insur insurance choices. And these obviously will be courses that you've had offers for already and you have declined them. So also at this stage, you will need to contact each institution involved. So if you're holding a firm and insurance choice at two different institutions, um, and you want to amend, maybe either swap the firm and insurance or amend to a different decision, you will need to contact each of the institutions that you're holding currently your CF and or CI with um, and advise them of what you want to do. And again, they will look for full details there. So if it was you contacting us, we would ask you, if you're not holding a firm offer with Queen's and you would like to do so, we would ask you to provide the details of your current firm choice. Um, and then as an institution, we would contact you, UCAS and give permission uh, for you to do that. Now, what you will need to do is when you've contacted UCAS, you will need to also contact the institutions involved. So those that you're currently CF and CI with, and you will ask them to contact UCAS and give permission. So once both institutions have contacted UCAS, or if there's only one institution involved, and they've contacted UCAS and given permission for you to change those choices, at that stage, that will be actioned. So I think the key thing for you to remember is that at there will be three things. There will be, obviously, you need to contact UCAS, and you need to contact one or both institutions, um, whichever involved, and those those institutions will need to give their permission via contacting UCAS. And then once that has been once that has been complete, then your decisions will be amended at that stage. The second thing then is maybe applicants who have not applied to Queen's. Um, so they didn't apply to Queen's for entry in September 2020, but they're now considering to do so. It may still be possible um, for an application to be considered via UCAS Extra. The exceptions to this are medicine, dentistry, social work, nursing and midwifery, and actuarial and risk management. And all these courses have been closed uh, since the 15th of January deadline. So unfortunately, it would not be possible uh, to consider any additional applicants at this stage for those courses. Obviously, to ensure that you are, obviously, it's in your best interest, the course that you're thinking of apply, applying to, we would ask you to email um, admissions. So if you're thinking of applying through extra and extra is basically an additional choice um, that you will add on at the end um, of the process. And if you're thinking of applying for that, you should contact admissions and obviously by emailing admissions at QUB dot ac dot uk and you should provide full details of your academic background so for example your gcses if you're taking a levels if you're taking a mix of a levels and btacs btac qualifications etc whatever qualifications that you are taking you should provide those you should provide us with the course that you're interested um, about in, in obviously extra. We will need to know your UCAS personal ID number um, and any choices that you're currently holding at the moment. Admissions will then advise you based obviously on your academic background. Um, so for example, if you were applying to something like aerospace engineering, um, we would be looking for subjects like maths at A level um, and also a relevant science. So for example, like physics, biology, chemistry. So obviously it's very important that you provide those details and we will then advise you if you are eligible to be considered via extra. 
once we have advised you if you are um, and as an applicant then you decide that you would like to progress to to Queen's um, with an extra application. At that stage, you will have to decline any offers um, that you have. So if you've got a CF and CI there, or if you're still sitting that you haven't actually chosen your CF and CI at the moment, you will have to, at that point, decline the offers that you have, and then you will submit your extra choice um, via, obviously, UCAS Extra. Um, so that's really just um, a quick, I suppose, tour through um, what actually is required if you decide that you would like to change your current choice, uh, either if it's a CF or CI, or indeed if you're considering adding an extra choice to Queen's if you've never applied before. So I hope that's helpful. Um, obviously, we're happy, I think, to take questions now. So I'll just go back to Matt. Hi, thanks, Sandra. Uh, so the chat is now open. Uh, if you do have any questions for either myself, Raymond or Sandra, please feel free, to free, please feel free even to send them through to us and we'll answer them the best possible. Uh, one of the questions that has come through while we've been waiting, uh, Raymond, is does every course allow you to study abroad? Um, so not not every course has it within the course. So, for example, if you were studying a language, there may be an option to travel abroad for a full year studying your chosen language. Um, but it's not included within all courses. But you can um, apply to do some travel no matter what course you are studying and um, so it really just it just depends what route you want to go down if you're if you're studying a course that allows it all well and good if you're not you still have the option to apply to do some international study okay uh and another question that's come through uh do all the accommodation sites have gyms uh, built into them so it's at the moment it's just uh bt elms bt1 elms bt1 and elms bt2 are in the city center they're called BT1 and BT2 because that's the postcode that they are in Belfast. So they're right in the heart of the city. And it's only Elms BT1 that has a gym attached to the accommodation. If you're living in Elms uh, BT9 or the student village, it is about a 10 minute walk away from the PEC or the physical education center that I spoke to you about. So, um, you know, it's not a, a huge walk away. It is only about 10 minutes. So if you wanted to get involved in physical activity, it's it's very close to where you would be living. Okay, uh, so don't forget, if you do have any questions, feel free to keep sending them in and we'll just work through them. Uh, another question here is, uh, what is the student union like? Is it actually on campus? So the student union is, uh, at the, well, the one that's currently being renovated is just across the road from the Lanyon building, which is right in the Queen's Quarter of Belfast. So it's really, really close to the one that's being renovated. But as uh, the Students Union is now, it is about a five minute walk just up the road, up Elmwood Avenue. Uh, there are two sites to the Students Union at the moment. So they have the, the main Students Union offices where you go to meet with people, and then they have the Speakeasy Bar. So that is a, a venue where Live music would be played, they would host different activities, um, and they would, uh, you can obviously go there and socialize and that sort of thing. So there are two sites at the moment, but once the new building has been built, it will literally be a stone's throw away from the main Latin building. Okay, uh, and last question that's come through at the minute, so feel free, like I said, to get your questions in if you do have any uh, as we're going along, but last question that we've currently got, uh, is there any uh, support services available for students when they arrive at uh, Queen's? Should they have any problems with things like accommodation or with the studies like that? Yeah, so there are lots of support services. Um, I mentioned a few in the presentation. So things like in terms of wellbeing support, there is a drop-in centre. You can go straight to that if you feel you need some sort of support. There are counselling sessions that um, you can book into. There are different consultations and coaching sessions that you can get involved with. Uh, the wellbeing service also offers you safe and healthy relationship advice. So if that's something you're worried about and all this stuff is available to you as soon as you arrive on campus. So if you're feeling apprehensive in any way about anything, you can get involved in that way. Uh, in terms of disability support, like I mentioned earlier, no matter what level of disability you have, you can, you would basically, um, you would basically get involved 
through that by registering on your UCAS application and declaring the disability that you have. If you don't do it at that stage, you can still avail of the disability services after you've arrived at Queen's. So to answer that question, Matt, yes, there is lots, um, there's lots of opportunity to feel supported as soon as you arrive on campus. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so we've, that's the last question that we've had coming through, so we'll give you another sort of 30 seconds or so. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask them, unless you've got anything that you'd like to add, Raymond or Sandra. I think you're muted, Sandra. Got to unmute, apologies. Um, the only thing I think to add just to what Raymond was saying about the Student Union, um, we will have a new kind of state of the art um, Student Union. I think that's probably, is it 2022? Is that correct, Raymond? That's the projected date. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously your students will obviously get the opportunity to enjoy that um, during part of your studies. Sandra, I would just like to ask a question. So you very succinctly mm -hmm. went through the process for people who want to potentially change their UCAS use, use choices. Yes. Is, is this something that you come across every year? Is this something that people do often? Because I'm Absolutely. Sure people, are, people are a bit worried, oh, I've made my choice and I don't know if I'm going to be able to change now. Yeah. I think what happens, I suppose the one that we would receive um, on, a, on a fairly regular basis is um, I think sometimes young people, when they're making their choices, um, they, they make them quite quickly because obviously they've been given a deadline um, and then maybe sometimes just after that they will decide well actually I'm not sure that that's now what I wish to do so we do we do quite often um, get quite a lot of requests to change um, and also obviously once they go outside of that 14 day period I think sometimes young people think it's not possible after that um, but it is still possible. It just requires the permission um, of both institutions involved. Um, sometimes it might only be one institution, but we do receive those requests quite regularly. Perfect. Okay, we have just had a, another quick question come through. Uh, are there any scholarships available to international students? Yeah, so there are various scholarships for international students. Um, it wouldn't be something I have a massive amount of detail about um, at the moment because we do have international recruitment officers and an international office who can help support you with that and um, so what we will do for that particular student is send you some details about all our international uh, scholarships that are available so we'll send those to you after the webinar is finished yep yeah, okay and uh, a quick question as well that's come through from adam asking for uh, apply gu application guidance for international students and again we'll send those through to you uh, after the webinar is finished as well adam Okay, so if there's no other questions, we'll give you another quick 30 seconds, uh, but if there's no other questions, uh, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah, and just one thing to, to finally note is that if you do have any queries, if something comes to mind as soon as you um, as soon as soon we finish the webinar, you can get in touch with myself or Matt at student recruitment at qub.ac.uk, and you can get in contact with our admissions department. Um, Sandra's a very busy lady, so you might not be able to get her directly, but certainly somebody from admissions will be able to respond to you if you email admissions at qub.ac.uk. Absolutely. And, and Raymond, if I could just add to that, if you are emailing admissions, if you just, it's somewhere in your email could give us an idea of the course or courses that you're interested in. It just allows us to direct it to the right um, admissions officer so that we can get advice to you as quickly as possible. Perfect. Listen, thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining us. Um, it's been great. Uh, I hope it was helpful. And if you have any other queries, we'll be happy to help. But for now, goodbye. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And I hope your studies go really well. Thank you.